Hello people, <clears throat> in this video we want to look at tuberculosis difference between a child and an adult. Okay, So basically you know what tuberculosis is, it is a, a illness caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, it is a bacteria, isn't it? So basically if a child gets it, how different is it from an adult getting it? That's all we want to look at in this video and that also we are looking at from this table, right, from the textbook. Childhood tuberculosis, we are concerned about childhood tuberculosis here. Why? Because we are looking at pediatrics, obviously, right? So primary infection from an open case in a child, the primary infection is from an open case. What does it actually mean? Let us understand by seeing the adult tuberculosis thing. It's a reactivation of healed focus or reinfection. So this adults usually get a infection again. That's what it looks like, reinfection, reactivation of a healed focus. So this is something that is dual strike kind of a thing. Here it is primary, so it will be the first infection for the child. Obviously, right, it's a child, the first infection will come. It has to get the first one, isn't it? Whereas the site, the site is usually apical. So if this is the lung, where is the apex, apical, primary focus. In our GONS complex video, we have already seen this, the primary complex which one? This one. So it is apical. So they have shown a GONS focus here. So apical should actually mean the apex of the lung. So if this is the lung, this will be the apex, isn't it? So it should be apical. This will be the area of primary focus. And in, uh, in adults, it will be peripheral due to sluggish circulation. So periphery means what? This one anything but even this can be periphery from the center if you visualize anything external that will become the periphery isn't it now let us move on to childhood tuberculosis again guys what are we looking at today today we are looking at childhood tuberculosis versus adult tuberculosis, uh, adult tuberculosis what did we see till now we saw that this will be a primary infection in adults it will be a reinfection or a reactivation of a healed focus in the child, it will be apical, the site, and in adult, it will be periphery, right? It will be the periphery, that is the site. Okay, then. Healing by calcification in most cases. In most cases of, in the childhood tuberculosis, the healing is by calcification. In adult, it is fibrosis. In adult, it is fibrosis. Again, in our GONS complex video, we have seen this. Primary complex or GONS complex, both are same. In the exam, if they ask you primary complex, then again, they are referring to GONS complex means what? They are referring to primary tuberculosis, okay? So, in this video, we have already seen the fate, the fate of, the fate of primary tuberculosis we had already seen. So just remember, in children it is C, calcification, adult it is fibrosis. Mostly it is calcification. Mostly it is calcification. And that too, they are talking about healing. Healing is calcification. So let's make that as a green. Healing is calcification. Okay, mostly. So what is the other option then? Fibrosis. Now let's continue here. Glandular element dominates. In children, glandular element dominates. Actually, this glandular uh, element, what they are talking about, not sure, but in Gons complex, we have seen that in the abdomen, isn't it? We have seen that here, this uh, elementary tract, there we have seen all this. Then what is this? Next point. Sh guys, shall we move on to the next point? Shall we move on? Segmental lesions are common, common segmental lesions and in adults they are saying segmental lesions are uncommon, cavitation is frequent. So basically just remember like this, okay, whenever there is reactivation, right, whenever there is reactivation, so that's a reactivation case, right, that time cavitation can be there. But otherwise in children what will be there? Segmental lesions are common. Let's move on now. In childhood tuberculosis, childhood tuberculosis is generally non-infective. Oh, that's a good thing, isn't it? So, childhood tuberculosis is non-infective. So, for others, right? It is good. So the child can probably go to school or something. Hematogenous dissemination is common. So, via the blood, 
right hematogenous dissemination is common so we will mark this as red or what hematogenous dissemination is common in adults it is uncommon what and all can get affected guys so first of all we are let's say in the lungs so via hematogenous spread there can be miliary tuberculosis that is nothing but molting extensive molting miliary molting of the lung so miliary tuberculosis then um, brain brain there can be meningitis then uh, tuberculoma meningitis csf findings we have already covered isn't it what happens in tuberculous meningitis it will become cloudy lymphocytes or neutrophils can be more proteins will be more glucose will be slightly less right and in, when you do the culture you will uh, not the culture but the afb staining uh, acid fast bacilli you will see of the tuberculous uh, bacteria all that you have already seen then what else from here where it will go so we covered what brain lung hematogenous spread right then liver liver okay then kidney kidney also it will affect renal tuberculosis wherever blood goes this will also go then spleen spleen okay then spleen then any glands peritoneum bones don't forget bones so the bones this is our long bone so bone skin also bones joints okay so you have seen miliary tuberculosis right miliary tuberculosis photo then here we have also covered the ab uh, alimentary tract tabes mesenterica that is the lymph nodes which are involved isn't it so that is uncommon in uh, adults so that is a green for adults isn't it so let us see what in all is good for children it's not infective then what else okay let us see what is red red please okay hematogenous dissemination then what else here cavitation fibrosis here calcification okay then i'm thinking for the child the worst thing will be this hematogenous dissemination isn't it being non infective may help others but not the child itself but yeah so it is not infective childhood tuberculosis is not infective but this hematogenous is spread within the child going everywhere isn't it okay main thing you'll also have to say in childhood tuberculosis is this uh, gons focus right primary focus primary complex gons complex that word should come out okay let us just look at how the treatment is also different see based on how much for marks this comes for you can talk about a lot of things okay you can talk about the symptoms right present presenting complaints all that you can talk about anyways now let us move on to the treatment see basically in children know what happens sputum and all you cannot expect because they kind of swallow the sputum in adults you can do sputum examination and all that let us see what they are, they have told you. so here first of all this table is clinical categories for tuberculosis clinical conditions there is a category 1 and a category 2 isn't it there is a category 1 and category 2 hold on so category 1 this is new con new sputum positive regimen for children is hrze 2 months hrze and 4 months hre isn't the same as the adults thing but here the dose will differ right let us look at that then category 2 is relapse treatment failure okay return after default so here for children the treatment is they are adding streptomycin hrze s hrze hre so here they are talking about a total of 8 months of treatment for children this is weight based right the dose is weight based so hrze es so isoniazid rifampin pyrazinamide ethambutol streptomycin the highest um, dose is for pyrazinamide pyrazinamide name also is long remember the dose also is long something like that you can remember pyrazinamide 25 so long right and isoniazid isoniazid niazid just remember five okay at least remember these two the extremes pyrazinamide uh maximum dose 
based on weight and isonic acid which is less so this is what we have seen for um, adults right children doesn't look any different isn't it to me the child thing doesn't look any different do you see any difference 2 4 2 1 let's see wait 2 4 2 1 yeah 2 4 2 1 5 it's the same thing i don't see any difference isn't it 2 4 2 1 5 okay so not much difference here when you talk about the treatment isn't it so if somebody asks you now childhood tuberculosis how is it different you will say there will be gons complex okay then it will be um uh hematogenous dissemination will be there to all the other things hematogenous dissemination will be there and the child will be not infective to others okay i think as of now this much is enough what do you say so there's a lot you can write okay about tuberculosis in children how you will diagnose and all that right basically you will do what in children it is really difficult to see the symptoms and diagnose right so diagnose you will use uh, tuberculin test you will use chest x ray physical examination you will use history of contact you will know then you will use newer uh, technologies are there like cbnat right right so we have looked at almost everything guys uh, that's all so basically these children will come in with uh, weight loss mild fever anorexia right that is what will be there the words of the textbook are like cough will be inconsistent may be absent in advanced disease as a closing note guys remember tuberculosis can affect everybody of any age so bcg vaccine is given to protect against miliary tuberculosis right it is given at birth it's an intradermal injection guys as an examination question or even otherwise just know that in addition to this uh, regimen right hrz des and all that there is one more thing about steroids okay in children they have seen that steroids also help let's just look at this information here what which is the exact corticosteroid they're talking about they're talking about prednisolone pred pred ni so lone prednisolone and what is the dose etc they're talking about let's use a better color so they're talking about 1 to 2 mg this is less than isoniazid per kg per day right 1 to 2 mg per kg per day for 4 to 6 weeks that is like 1 to 1.5 month how much prednisolone should you give 1 to 2 mg per kg per day 4 to 6 weeks only children steroids are indicated for treating tuberculosis what type of tuberculosis endobronchial endobronchial tuberculosis severe miliary tuberculosis tuberculosis pericardial effusion right all that it is suggested so one more point we added now in this video on tuberculosis child versus adult okay thank you here is the summary look at it once okay